Right, welcome back guys to another video. Um, and what I've got for you today is a slightly sort of different sort of layout video. Uh, and I'll go through a bit later on as to why. And, uh, but yeah, I thought I'd uh, finally get around to making a video of my own car, which is to replace the C63 I had. And the video for that car is up on the channel. So do check that out. But yeah, the complete opposite ends of uh, the spectrum sort of thing. C63 rear wheel drive you know, naturally aspirated 6.2 litre V8, whereas this is, in its own right, respective rights, it is an absolute awesome car. So yeah, it's a Civic Type R FK2, the first gen of the turbocharged Type Rs. And honestly, if you know anything about these cars, these cars are way better than the predecessors, especially, well, the FN2 and the EP3. Uh, don't get me wrong, them two cars were awesome in their own right, but I don't think they deserve the R badge, whereas this thing has brought back that EK9 flame. Uh, so yeah, what I'll do is uh, for today is what we'll do is I'll go through why I bought this car, why I chose to buy an FK2 and uh, just like a little little video as to what's going on. There's a few things, the, the, whole, the plan today was to actually make a proper review of this car, but I'm a bit limited on fuel supplies and as we all know, in the current climate at the moment, people have gone do lally for fuel. So uh, I didn't want to risk just hammering this car around because I need the fuel to get about for the rest of the week. So yeah, but uh, what we'll do is we'll go inside the car, just go for a little walk around the car, uh, just a brief spec, and we'll save the majority of it for the review. Um, yeah, so subscribe to our YouTube channel, Performance Lifestyles. Check us out on Instagram as well, performance underscore lifestyles, and we're on Facebook as well, performance lifestyles. We've got plenty of uh, performance car reviews uploaded on there and we are looking at getting into a bit more slightly different sort of uh, like the diesels as well and stuff so yeah check them out and if you'd like your car featured on our channel drop us an email pflifestyle at hotmail.com or altern alternatively drop us an email through any one of our social media accounts and we'll be more than happy to help but for today we've just got a brief thing as to a different type of video just about this type r so yeah we'll catch you around the car just a quick little walk around then. Uh, as you can see, these cars, you've probably heard of them, you've probably seen them around on the roads, even though there's not that many about, but they actually look absolutely, I think they look absolutely amazing. I'm a big Honda Type R fan, and these cars are absolutely mega. What a Honda have actually done is, what most manufacturers actually do is, what the, they'll show a render of the car, or design of the car that they make out that they will be uh, showing to the public, uh, releasing to the public, but they don't actually release that. They kind of like tone them down before they bring them out. But what Honda have done is they've left everything as it was supposed to be. And as, as it was tested as well on the Nürburgring, and these were the fastest front wheel drive production cars on the Nürburgring. And they've left it as it is. And honestly, these cars are absolutely awesome to drive. Front wheel drive, 306 horsepower, two litre turbocharged engine, six speed gearbox, LSD, beautiful handling. They handle like they're on rails, quite literally. Fantastic cars, they've got enough power to get you out of any sticky situations. Straight line performance again, 0 to 60 times on these things are on paper. I think, don't quote me on this, but I think they're late five seconds, mid to late five seconds. Uh, I will get a draggy run done on this. This is my own car, so I don't mind. It's a, it's a solid car, to be fair. So, um, so I will get a draggy time run done on this on the review, which will come hopefully in the next week or two. So please do watch out, listen, uh, watch out for that. Uh, but yeah, I'll go through why I've chose this car and why I decided to buy a FK2. Um, after my C63 that I sold um, a few months ago now. Now, the main, main reason was once I sold the C63, I was actually looking to buy something along the lines of an M4 cab. It's just something for the summertime, you know, well, what we had left of it. And, um, and when I started looking, I noticed their prices had increased dramatically as compared to what they were like before I, you know, sold my car. So it got to a point where I was thinking, do I actually spend the additional five, six grand in some cases where the prices have gone jumped up by. On an M4 cab, probably only going to keep it six months or so. And then when I sell it, I'm probably going to take a bit of a hit on it. Now, that's not something that I was prepared to do. So 
I started looking around, looking around, looking around, and as you're probably aware, well, as you're probably aware, most car prices have gone up anyway. Uh, standard cars, normal cars, and performance cars have just gone ridiculously expensive at the moment. So uh, some of them will come down, some of them, some of them won't come down. Iconic, legendary sort of cars aren't really going anywhere. Some of them have jumped up really, really, really highly. And uh, like I said, I don't think they will be coming down. But then you get certain cars, I think they will drop. They will drop qu quite a bit, but not just yet, not any time in the foreseeable future. So yeah, it's the issue of, I don't know, really microchips from China because of COVID-19 and all the usual stuff. And uh, that's led to these increases and new cars aren't being produced uh, quick enough. And people, rather than waiting for a, a brand new car, they're actually opting to buy second-hand cars and second-hand prices in essence have jumped up. So for me, it was more of a case of I wanted a uh, M4 or an M3, M4 cab or an M3 uh, uh, saloon, obviously, which is the only thing that they come in. So it was either one of them, competition or non-competition. But when I looked at the price, I thought, no, this isn't going to happen. So I started looking at other cars now. I've had one of these in the past. And as you, I've mentioned numerous times, I... I'm a big Honda fan. I love these Type R's and I was a bit disappointed with the uh, EP3 and FN2. They were very good cars, but I, as I mentioned previously, I don't think they quite deserved that um, Type R badge. So I was a bit reluctant to buy one of these initially um, a while back. And when I did take the plunge, it honestly, it relived that EK9 sort of uh, memory. So I thought, so I started looking at FK2s um and notice obviously their price has gone up massively as well i say massively is three four grand and these you know these are 2015 16 with 30 or thousand miles i didn't want something with too many miles on it 30 or thousand miles yeah they were 18 grand 19 grand a few well about nine months ago but then looking around and they were still 23 24 grand some in certain uh, cases so i decided to go for a fk2 but now, some of you are probably not going to be, um, probably not the route that you'd take, but it was something that I was prepared to do and I've done it before. So I started to look for one that was a damage repaired car. And this is in essence what this is. It's a category D damage repaired car, low mileage, and it's got a full Honda history. The usual curb rash on the wheels. The wheels were known to be a bit rubbish on these FK2. The paint was, should I say, they flaked and they chipped up quite easily. And they were quite easy to curb because the rim overhung the actual tyres. But again, it's not the end of the world. A few hundred pounds won't sort out. So I took the plunge on this uh, FK2, low mileage car, in essence, 30, below 30,000 miles. And honestly, these cars are mega. They are fantastic. They handle absolutely great. They drive beautifully, beautifully well. And the looks is what a lot of people were a bit on the fence about. But for me... I think they look great. It's a Type R. It's got that. It's got that status, should we say, that it's a race car, and I think they need all these big wings and you know the funky designs on the bumpers, the tracks wider on the front wheels, hence why you've got wider arches. But they're a beautiful car. Um, so my actually, like I mentioned previously, my initial plan was to actually review this car today, make a full-on review, go for a drive, do a couple of draggy runs. But that's changed purely because of the fuel situation that I mentioned previously. And as you're probably already aware, and you're probably in a similar sort of situation where you've got enough fuel in your car, but you're thinking, right, okay, where am I going to get some more from? Um, so yeah, the plan for me is hopefully over the next um, couple of weeks, I will get the video, I will get this car reviewed and a video up on our channel. So please do watch out for that. That is something that... Um, if you're a Honda fan, you might want to see. If you're not, then I still say have a look at it. Honestly, don't don't knock these cars. You know, the rivals, Golf R's and S3s and stuff, I think the renders for the cars that were released before the cars were released were, the cars looked a lot snazzier than the actual car production car that went to, into production. But with Honda, they kept everything. Now, these cars were the best handling front wheel drive production car on the planet. Uh, and you can see why. Honestly, they drive immensely well. Uh, the plus R button it stiffens things up, makes it handle better, makes it drive not so good, but I'll go into more detail on the actual uh, um, review video. So yeah, with this uh, FK2, it was a case of like with a category D car, if you've never had any experience with a damage repaired car, I will make a separate video on based on this car 
for you guys to see. So if you're on the fence about a, buying a damage repaired car, check out that, watch out for that video. It will be released soon. I will get it done, hopefully uh, in the very near future. So do watch out for that. It's not all as bad as it seems. What, you know, it's, don't, there's no need to be afraid like most people are of buying a car that's been repaired. And I'll go through the details and what to look for and all the rest of it in a, in a later video. So do watch out for that. But for today, what we will do is, um, I will conclude the video here. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, just a brief little thing. And what I'll do is, we'll subscribe to our YouTube channel in the meantime, Performance Lifestyles. Check us out on Instagram, performance underscore lifestyles, and Facebook as well, performance lifestyles. We've got plenty of videos uploaded. Uh, we've got plenty of content to come. And as I mentioned, we will be looking at doing more your diesel sporty sort of looking cars as well. So if you'd like your car featured on the channel, drop us an email, pflifestyle at hotmail.com. Uh, or drop us a message through any one of our social media accounts and we'll be more than happy to accommodate. But in the meantime, stay safe everybody as per usual and we will catch you on the next video.